This is the newest action camera from Insta360 and it's called the Go 3, but don't be fooled, it's not just an incremental update from the popular Go 2 camera. In this video, a close look at the redesigned Go 3, including all of its key features, with a focus, of course, on its application as a bike-specific camera, whatever that is. So Insta360 sent this camera over a couple of months ago for testing, and so I've got a pretty good sense for its capabilities and features by now. Now the Go 3 employs the same modular design as the outgoing Go 2, where the camera itself nests into a pod, which acts as a charger and a remote. But the Go 3 really takes this concept to the next level. In fact, with the Go 3 mounted into its new action pod, the camera actually starts to resemble a traditional action camera with the responsive touchscreen and full access to all the controls and settings. Now, while there is no front-facing screen on the Go 3, the screen on the Go 3 Action Pod flips up, effectively giving the user a full-size front-facing screen, which of course makes vlogging and selfie shots really easy. And then perhaps the coolest feature is when you split the camera from the pod, they're still connected wirelessly. So you can frame up your shot with the screen on the pod, which effectively acts as a portable monitor. Now, of course, you can also change the capture settings and you can use the pod as a remote control to start and stop recording as well. And then to save battery you can toggle the screen on or off and just stash the pod in a pocket or a backpack when not in use. Now so far the factory paired built-in Bluetooth connection between the camera and the pod has been flawless and it hasn't given me any trouble at all. But of course if you get too far away from the camera the pod will start to lose connection just like any other Bluetooth device. But still it's been very user friendly. So the way it works is that if you turn on the camera from the action pod it'll turn on the pod and the camera and then establish the wireless Bluetooth connection. But you can also just turn on the camera itself and it'll just use your previous video or photo settings. Now in this mode it's super minimal but still it's really simple to capture video this way. You just push the only button on the camera itself and it'll start and stop recording. Now the camera itself claims about 45 minutes of battery time at 1080p at 30 frames per second. But when you snap it into the action pod it's supposed to boost it up to 170 minutes and so far these numbers have been pretty spot on. In my experience I've been getting about two and a half hours or so of use in various capture settings before I need to charge it up. Now of course you can't replace the battery in either component so you will have to charge up the camera between uses but it is worth noting that much like Apple AirPods the action pod actually charges the camera when it's snapped in. Now of course this is a departure from other action cameras which have swappable batteries but of course there's always trade-offs and I think the Go 3 is geared toward the hobbyist user with ease of use as a top priority. Now along those same lines the storage is all on board so there's no micro SD cards to mess around with. And you've got a choice of 32, 64, or 128 gigs of storage in the camera unit itself. Now again, you're sacrificing swappable SD cards, but with this design, you gain simplicity, which again, for the average user, is going to be a big plus. Now, of course, the big selling point is the size. The camera itself weighs just under 36 grams, which is ridiculous for the quality that you get from it. This tiny little pill of a camera will shoot up to 2.7K at 30 frames per second, and you've got other options too for 1440 and 1080, and it can even do slow-mo shots up to 120 frames per second at 1080p. Now, it's not a 360 camera by any means, but it does have a party trick, which is actually really cool and even practical. Now, on the outgoing model, it was called Pro Mode, but with the Go 3, it's now called Free Frame Mode which is kind of like a partial 360 camera mode where you can shoot first and then to a small degree you can reframe the shot after the fact using the mobile app or the free Insta360 Studio desktop app. Now for action sports in particular, it's not uncommon to mount the camera where you think it should be mounted, only to realize that when you get home, the camera was pointed at the ground or at the sky the whole time. Now if you shoot in free frame mode, you have the ability to change the camera angle, again to a small degree, in post, which can be a lifesaver in some cases. And then the other more obvious use for free frame mode is exporting your video at different aspect ratios without having to crop video and lose image quality. Now this is super handy if you like to edit traditional 16 by nine videos, but you also wanna use the same clips to post to social media in a vertical or a square format. Now I should also mention that in free frame mode, you can apply horizon lock and flow state stabilization in post which gives you a bit more control over the final video clip. Now another feature that I really like, which is not a primary selling point, is the magnetic mounting system. Now the camera itself is magnetic, so it easily 
snaps into the action pod or the included necklace mount or many of the other included mounts. And then when things can get more treacherous, some mounts like the quick release mount use a magnetic mount in combination with these metal latches that hold the camera firmly in place but release at the push of a button. Now for me, this is probably the most understated feature. Now with traditional GoPro style fingers, I've got to unscrew and then re-screw the camera in place every time I want to change the shot. And I've got to make sure that it's at the right angle on the chest mount every time I reattach it. Now with the quick release magnetic mount, it's super fast to take the camera off get a quick talking headshot, and then just snap it back into place on the chest mount and keep riding. Now I am aware that you can get these types of mounts as accessories for traditional action cameras, but it's nice that it's built into the Go 3 both on the camera and the action pod as well. Now the camera has many of the same features as other Insta360 cameras, things like flow state stabilization, which is awesome, horizon lock, and shooting modes like time lapse, time shift, pre-recording and loop recording. Now, when compared to the outgoing Go 2, the updated Go 3 gets a bump in resolution, again, up to 2.7K. It's got the responsive two inch touchscreen and it even has voice control 2.0, which actually works pretty well. Start recording. Stop recording. The camera also has two microphones as opposed to one on the Go 2, although I'm not exactly sure of the benefit of adding a second mic. It's also worth noting that the Go 3 camera itself is waterproof, but the action pod is only water resistant. So this won't be a great option if you plan to do any underwater shooting. Now I'm not really a tech channel and I don't generally find the side-by-side -side comparisons to be all that useful, especially since most modern action cameras offer full control over white balance exposure and the color profile. Now what I will say is that in stock form, just right out of the box, the video quality is remarkably good. Now I mostly shoot in 1080p, 24 frames per second in the action field of view. So this isn't even the absolute best quality and it's definitely decent for capturing most action sports. Now one of the things I noticed right away is that the camera adjusts to changing lighting conditions pretty quickly. Now in these clips here, there's a lot of contrast as we're darting in and out of tree cover on a bright sunny day. And you can kind of see that when it starts to get blown out, it tends to recover pretty quickly. Now again, these are stock settings and the color is set to the vivid profile, which I know for a lot of you video people is kind of taboo. Now you can set the color profile to flat and then do a little bit of color grading in post, but it should be noted that this camera doesn't support the log profile, which again, I think is completely fine for the target consumer, which again, seems to be the casual user who wants an easy to use action camera. Now, lastly, since I keep talking about this fictional casual target user, the export process, just like all the other Insta360 cameras is very straightforward. You can use the free mobile app, which never has any issues finding the camera, and you can browse the files, edit the files, and then export the video clips straight to your phone. Or since there's no SD card, you can also plug the camera directly to a computer via USB, and then just simply pull the files off, which are MP4 files for all the formats, even the free frame mode. Again, keeping it simple, yet relatively full feature. So who is this camera for? Should you upgrade if you already have a go-to? Is this a toy or is it a legitimate tool? Well, for starters, I think that this is a great supplemental camera for anyone who's serious about capturing their action sports. The tiny size and the multiple configurations make it really easy to just throw in a bag and get some really creative shots. Now, I think in terms of pure video quality, there are of course higher resolution cameras out there that will shoot 4K or even 5.7K. So if that's important to you, then this camera is probably not the right choice. Now, if you have a Go 2 and you enjoy using it, then I do think the jump to the Go 3 may be worth it since the updated action pod is just so much more capable than the previous charging pod. Being able to preview your shot and then use the screen as a front facing monitor and even reviewing your footage are all pretty useful features that the Go 2 simply doesn't offer. Now for me, I really like using this to capture POV footage with the camera by itself for no other reason than it's really light. It doesn't really feel like I'm wearing a camera and for those who wear a full face helmet, I could see mounting this to the chin bar and then forgetting that it's even there. Now I plan to keep using the Go 3 in combination with the Insta360 X3 so I can get multiple different shots in a short amount of time. Remember for small channels like ours, we are the camera crew. And so maximizing footage in the simplest way possible is the name of the game. All right, well that's gonna do it for this one. If you have any questions about the Go 3, let us know down in the comments and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.